Hi guys, hope you guys are all okay. Today I'm just going to quickly run through how I connected a phase sensor to a brushless DC motor so I could calculate out the RPM. So what I've got here guys is I've got a Hobbywing brushless RPM sensor, which is a phase sensor. And it literally just connects to two of your three wires that go up onto your brushless motor. Here I'm just using an old uh, 20 800 kilovolt motor and okay I'm being a bit lazy I'm using a flight controller board here just so as I can use beta flight to control the motor because using the bi-directional d-shot value it will show me the RPM in beta flight so that will allow me to validate that what my ESP32 is uh, calculating as the RPM is correct I'm running the RPM phase sensor on 3.5 3 volts which is driven from the back of the ESP32 there so that's where the 3.3 volts is coming from uh, I've got got the ESP32 actually running on 5 volts here from, from my bench supply and the and the sensor wire from the uh, RP wing RPM sensor is on pin 18 of the ESP32 and this is just my oscilloscope probe on here if we look at the code here we can see that uh, I've just, I mean, it's, it's a very simple piece of code. I mean, it's, it doesn't take much at all here. We're going to use one of the ESP32 interrupts. And we're going to say that we've got my, uh, just, just to be clear, a, a pole count on a motor. Let's just have a quick look at that. So when we're talking pole counts, what we need to do is look at the number of magnets going around the edge of that motor there. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but I've got I've got I've actually got forty. I've got I've got a line there look, that goes across and I've got one long magnet. I get a pointer. I've got one magnet there, two, three, four and if I count around them all guys, I've got 14 magnets. So that's what we're going to call poles. And if we go back to our, our thing, we're saying we've got 14 poles. I've just chose a, a, a digital pin, number 18, pin number 18 on the ESC. I'm going to create a timer variable, unsign long, because it's going to hold, uh, it's going to call it hold millis in a moment. Uh, we need we need a counter because I'm going to collect a hundred a hundred uh, counts if you like a hundred pulses and then I'm going to measure the time it takes to to create a hundred pulses and obviously I'm going to need an RPM variable. This little piece of code here, obviously, whenever you do an interrupt, this is what runs every time it gets a a, a pulse from that uh, that phase sensor. It's going to increase the counter. We've got a little bit of setup code here. This this sets up the inter interrupt pin. So so we said that interrupt pin was number 18, pin number 18, and I want it on a rising edge, and I want to run this piece of code when every time I, I find the rising edge on that digital pin 18, I want to just increase the counter. And all I've got in my main loop is if the counter is greater than 99, because using greater than because just in case this loop gets a bit bigger and it might be 101 or 102 before it gets there to do the calculation that'd be okay as long as we make sure we can we use 102 to create the average we want to create a floating point but uh, variable I've just I've, I've separated this in, into two separate uh, lines just so it's easier to read so we, we create a, uh, a variable a floating point variable we need to do the next calculation in, in floating point math mathematics because we've got the counter which isn't a floating point uh, variable so it would it would it would force it uh, it, it would make the calculation wrong because it wouldn't use for floating point maths whereas we need to do so because we've, we're going to take the current time the timer in the system millis by the timer that I set here so if we think about this every time it goes around this loop if it equals a hundred I set timer variable to the value of millis which is a which is a, a ticker in the software it's counting all the time in, in milliseconds and it keeps and it keeps ticking and ticking and ticking and then when it's counted a hundred and it's got a hundred pulses it goes through this loop and says right okay so what is the ticker reading to now 
minus the ticker last time I came through this th this event and that gives me a time in milliseconds and then I want to divide that by the count of the number of pulses I've had so I now get the time it takes between the pulses and we call that the period and if I divide if I divide 60,000 which is uh, the milliseconds in a minute divided by the period times the number of poles divided by two I want I want pole pairs and I don't know if that I've done it this way because I don't know if that's the same because I've seen these phase sensors that only use one uh, one wire so the calculation might be slightly different here so so I've done it this way because I've worked out that mine definitely uses pole pairs and then we just we, we use serial print obviously we should be careful using serial prints because it slows down the code significantly but in this case, because we're using interrupts, it'll still keep counting, and, and, and therefore I can afford to get away with using serial prints for this demonstration. We set the timer to the now new value of millis, and the counter back to zero, and we start doing it again, and we keep collecting interrupts, and this just keeps going round and round. This if statement is usually not true, and eventually it becomes true because it's over over 99 uh, pulses being counted, and then we can run this again. Okay, so let's see what that looks in, like in practice. I'm going to put motor safe on there, and I'm going to lift this up, and I've got, what, 3,800 in beta flight. I'm calculating out 3,800 here. The period between the pulses is 2.22, 2.21, which is what I've got on the oscilloscope here for the period. So the ESP32 is calculating that out nicely. Okay, so let's just have a look what that looks like on the oscilloscope. So we've got, uh, if we put the cursors on here, uh, let's have a look and make sure we've got the y axis ones going. And let's just let's just put that up there. Check the voltage level of the signal is compatible with the ESP32. We've got a 3.34 volt delta between the two so we are okay in the range and that's because we're driving the uh, the hobby wing uh, rpm sensor with 3.3 volts again gotta be careful with the some hob some uh, some phase sensors because some of them are five volt only and we intend to use a uh, an esp 32 here uh, for, for this project so i need to get one that that, that works on on that uh, and that voltage so if i just increase the RPM M, M a little bit, then we can see how, how everything changes on the ESP. Sorry, on the on the oscilloscope, <coughs> and we can see if we if we measure this again. Let's put the X cursors on. Just just have the X, and we can zoom in a little bit here, like that. Let's bring the position over a little bit forward, so it's easier to see in the middle. And we'll move those cursors over here, and we can see I've got a I've got a peak of about 0 0.77 milliseconds. Milliseconds. But what I really want to know is this, and this is what we're calling the period in our code. So we've got 2.91 there, and if I look at my screen, I'm going 2.89, 2.91. Um, let me see if I can get that on here for you. So if we use our desktop here, you can see I've got 2.89, 2.90. Yeah, of course, cursors aren't ultra reliable on on on, on the oscilloscope, so this is this is this is pro probably more accurate. So there we have it. If I uh, if you jump back to the oscilloscope, if I speed up on, and slow down the motor, again you can see you can see the effects more clearly. slow it right down it's almost stopped you can probably hear it in the background almost stopped and there we have it we've got uh, we've got 6000 rpm 6000 rpm there well, I think that just demonstrates, to be fair, how easy it is uh, to use an ESP32 to measure things, and it's the way I used to do things before I bought the uh, very expensive oscilloscope, which, uh, if I'm honest, I'm trying to find things to use it for, because <laughs> uh, it's sometimes just easier to write a few lines of code and get what you need.
really quickly, especially when I'm usually using some sort of microcontroller anyway. Uh, but hopefully I'll find other things to use it for. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, I hope that was useful. Please like, subscribe. It really helps a lot. And, uh, and, 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 and yeah, just it just make, makes you feel good. So do it for me. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.